What is going on YouTube? So I wanted to come back today with the start of a new video series, which is going to be my NBA draft scouting videos. So um, with my ranking series done, I wanted to go into something that I've been covering pretty heavily since really the end of, not the end of the college basketball season, but uh, really since the start of the new year. So uh, today I'm just going to start with uh, people that I know the best and then keep on working from there. And today I wanted to start with the Cal Power Ford Ivan Rab. So I've watched a lot of Rab since he uh, since he came out of high school. And uh, five-star recruit coming into Cal this past year. Uh, came in as one of the most highly recruited players. Uh, went alongside Jalen Brown. And um, got to play alongside other guys like Jabari Bird, Jordan Matthews on what was a pretty talented Cal team that ended up with a first round exit in the NCAA tournament. So give a little give you guys a little bit of background information on Rab. He was a five star coming into college from Oakland, California. Uh six foot ten. I'm not exactly sure what he measures up to right now. I believe his last weight was about two twenty or two fifteen, but I would I I'd like to say he's probably more around two twenty, two twenty five. You could see him filling out his frame a little bit more at Cal this year. Uh, that was one of the big knocks against him, so it's good to see him developing there. And then the wingspan is pretty good at seven or at a seven foot two wingspan. So he does play a little bit at the four and the five. Um, he's got a lot. I think he mainly got looks at power forward this year. Cameron Rooks with Cal got most of the looks at center. So I'm gonna start with my with my main strengths for him, and then go into the weaknesses, and then talk about the better fits for him um, with NBA teams, and then what I see his future holding in the NBA. So go ahead and start with his strengths. So uh, first one is his drop step and spin move. I really like what he's able to do in the paint. He's got good paint moves um, or just overall good uh, skills in the post. And if you watch him play, he's not a very he's not a very quick or a very good uh, face up shooter. He's more of a back to the basket guy. And sometimes you'll see him all the way out near the. Uh, Maybe around the free throw line, around the elbow, trying to catch or trying to catch to work down in the paint, and honestly, it kind of works for him. Uh, he's got a decent jumper, and he does have multiple uh, tools in his arsenal to be able to um, use that drop step and spin move to be able to get in and uh, use some of his interior interior scoring skills. So my next one just kind of uh, plays off that first strength, and that is his overall post post skills are developing well. You could see him improving his post skills as the year went along. He took a little bit more. Um, I think he took a little bit more time to read the defense, uh, but still made quicker moves. Again, the drop step got even quicker as the year went along. And uh, a lot of times, especially when you when you weren't expecting it, his spin move came along really well. So uh, my third one is he's good on the offensive boards. One of his best qualities is just that he's a good rebounder. Um, He's a great offensive rebounder. This is a guy that averaged right around nine rebounds per game this year. And um, in an offense that really didn't have many rebounders, um, as far as I was concerned. They could hit the glass pretty hard, but um, talking about Jalen Brown, who was playing at the two a lot this year and uh, really didn't attack the paint that much. He had good size, but he wasn't much of a rebounder. Um, Cameron Rooks wasn't a great rebounder either. So it was mainly Rab working in the paint. And I think once he starts filling out the frame a little bit more, the rebounding will be there even more. So fourth strength is he has a very good wingspan for a power forward. Now, this changes a little bit if he does play at the five in the NBA. Again, not really sure where he's going to um, play in the NBA. I'm pretty sure he's probably just going to switch around. really depends on which team he goes to. But a seven foot two wingspan for a power forward is good. Uh, he's able to get... Um, he was able to block quite a few shots this year, around 1.2, 1.3 blocks per game. And I think that will translate well to the NBA. He doesn't have a great vertical, but he's still got the defensive awareness, the defensive instincts. I think he is a little bit better on the defensive uh, side of the floor. At least he was in college than on the offensive side. And um, I think the wingspan will only help with that. So my number five strength for Rab is he plays great fundamental defense. So this kind of works off what I was saying about his defense. He plays very good spot up defense. He is, um, he, he's just very fun. He, he is very good fundamentally. Um, working from side to side, he can stay with anyone around his size, which is impressive considering he's maybe not the ath most athletic 
um, power forward in the draft. I don't think he's even close. And um, he stays straight up a lot when he has to. Um, he plays well in the post. He was able to draw a lot of contact this year on defense without getting fouls called against him. He did get a lot of fouls called against him as a whole, but that's because he was pretty much matched up against the best uh, that the Pac-12 had to offer at the four or the five position, uh, whoever Cal was playing against. And again, I think that his defense is a lot more polished than his offense. And uh, he's, I think he's one of the most polished defenders that will probably end up going as a lottery pick. So my next strength is his underrated mid-range slash high post scoring. Now this isn't necessarily his jumper because his jumper gets mixed results. Uh, that to me that actually carries over to one of his weaknesses. But he was in a, he was vastly improved with his mid-range scoring over the course of the season. His decision making got better. Uh, his jumper did get better, but um, there were a lot of times. When you were, I mean, I, I saw him airball quite a bit this year. If you watch some of his summer highlights from this past summer, uh, you can see really the true depth of the problem that I'm talking about uh, when it comes to um, just his kind of poor decision making with spot up jumpers. But um, it, like this goes back to my drop or to my comment about his drop step. A lot of times he does catch the ball in the very very high post. Sometimes it just ended up because he would because he would get pushed that far just because. He was a little bit weaker than some of the guys he was playing against. But he was able, even back to the basket from 10, 12 feet out, he was still able to get that drop step spin move or at least uh, draw some contact and get to the free throw line. And I think it's just overall instincts um, on the offensive end of the floor drew out a little bit from just being an interior scorer, which uh, will help, especially if he's playing in the, at the four in the NBA. So my last strength is... He, go, he knows how to draw contact and gets to the line. He's very good on his left hand. Um, he doesn't really do jump hooks a lot, but he's able to draw contact with his body, shield the ball, and still get it up to the hoop. He played against some great power forwards this year. You could see some of those um, some of those examples. I'm going to put some links to some videos that really show that in the description below. My favorite one is a Draft Express video that was him against Marquise Chris, the Washington power forward. And uh, I'm also going to put just some of his general highlights in. But again, you can see that a lot of times he'll get that drop step spin move or just straight up catch it and get a spin move and he'll work to the opposite side of the basket. A lot of times he does catch it on the low, or low post on the right side and if you're facing the basket on the right side and then he would just get a quick spin move or like I said, a quick drop step and then finish on the opposite side of the glass. And he did, even though he wasn't the strongest power forward, not even close of all the ones he played against. Um, he, he knows his basketball instincts are good. His interior scoring is great. And just his overall post presence was able to, uh, draw a lot of con or draw a lot of contact. He was able to get to the line and his free throw shooting or free throw shooting did improve as the year went along, which is good. So moving to my weaknesses. And the first one is his small frame. So he did put on probably 10, 20 pounds of muscle since, well, I don't know if it was about muscle, but, um, probably mostly was, he did put on about 10 or 20 pounds since, uh, his, Wayne's after right after he was recruited and that is going to have to continue I think he's probably going to want to be around maybe 235 uh, 240 would be a good size for him the way he plays and um, would be a good weight for just improving things like uh, getting bullied in the post and um, maybe getting a little bit better position for rebounding since he does have such good instincts so my second weakness is he can struggle as a as a post presence like he does like I said I've mentioned this a lot of times he's got very very good um, inter interior scoring skills and he's got very good rebounding instincts um, whenever he's in transition he bolts right for the rim and um, on defense he's also got great hands and um, even though he doesn't have a great vertical he's able to bring down quite a few rebounds that you wouldn't think a guy of his size and stature would be able to get so again Putting on weight will definitely help with that. I think that's the biggest thing about making him a more known paint or more known post presence. And just the overall improvement that he saw this year at Cal uh, gives you hope for uh, just his overall development as a post scorer and um, a strong post presence on defense. So my next weakness is he's a little bit mediocre from the free throw line. So for being a guy that likes to pull up so much from mid range, you'd assume that he would probably be around 75% free throw shooter. 
and it got better, I believe, coming out of high school, he was around a 62%, so the fact that he was shooting around 66, 67% from the line um, does does give you hope. It did get a lot better by at the end of the year, too. Pac-12 tournament, he shot pretty he shot pretty well from the line. And even against Hawaii, he had a good final game. Uh, I've said this before, the reason why they lost to Hawaii was just kind of a dud performance from Jalen Brown and a few players that uh, were missing anyway. They weren't anticipating Jabari Bird, uh, probably the most notable one. But anyway, like I said, it, the free throw shooting will probably improve. I think the desired... Um, percentage for him to get up around would be around 70 to 75 percent if he can get up there then it would prove that he's worth taking as a lottery pick so next weakness is his offense decision making so I think this just comes with his offensive game needing to get more polished like I said a lot of times he get bullied in the post I think he'd rush his shots um, I think sometimes it might have gotten to him and he would pull up from maybe 12 to 15 feet when it was contested and he didn't have a good look at the basket. There were a lot of times he pulled up this year where it just ended up being an air ball. And I mean, a lot of times he drew double teams and would have easily been able to find a, uh, find a person to pass to. He's not the greatest passer, um, only averaged about one assist per game this year, but he also didn't get as many touches as you would think either. Um, it was a very perimeter shooting oriented team. So um, his post presence was able to help them stretch the floor quite a bit. But um, leads into my next weakness, which is um, he's not the most athletic in transition. And he does he does move kind of quickly. But when you watch him, it just looks a little bit awkward. Again, he's just not the most athletic guy in the draft. He's got very short, choppy steps. Um, but he's still able to get to the rim very quickly and do what he needs to do. So it's not a huge weakness. And... I think if he fills out his frame, gets a little bit more NBA conditioning done, it might help a little bit. But uh, that's one thing that's probably just going to have to be worked around for the rest of his uh, basketball career. So my last weakness is just that he turns it over too much. Um, he, a lot of times, like I said, the air ball is not good. He averaged about two turnovers per game, and he didn't get that many touches. So that's not a desired number either. Um I believe he only looked at around 11 shots per game or something like that, which um, for a superstar, I wouldn't say, it, well, maybe not a superstar, but for a five-star recruit coming in, one of the biggest names in the Pac-12, you'd assume you get a little bit more touches, but again, it's just kind of the offense that Cal runs. And again, it was a lot of times just poor decision-making with uh, taking contested mid-range jumpers, being double-teamed and deciding still try to po or still trying to post up. And I think that's just stuff that it did get better as the year went along, and his de decision making did get better. But I think just his ability to facilitate and his ability to handle double teams and his ability to, um, you know, take a little bit more time to, or maybe just see the floor a little bit better. I wouldn't say take a little bit more time because that might just cause him to hesitate in his post moves. But like I said, it got better as the year went along, which gives you hope uh, for him transitioning to the NBA. So. Now move into um, what I think is going to happen with him in the NBA. So in my last mock draft, I actually had him going fourth to, I believe, the Sacramento Kings. I'd have to look back exactly who who I had him going to. But um, I think he will fall anywhere from realistically five to ten. I don't think he's going he, I definitely don't think he's going to fall out of the draft lottery. Um, I think any team... Any team that needs help at the four or the five, he can come in and be an instant starter just because he is so good already on the defensive end of the floor, which is a, a huge knock against a lot of players now. They're getting drafted. Just they're one and done, so they don't focus that much on the defensive end of the floor. And uh, you can see the consequences sometimes in the NBA. I've had him going to the Celtics before. I think that'd be a good fit. They do need another guy that can play at the four or the five. Um, again, Sullinger and Olenek are good role players, and I think Olenek could develop into a solid starting uh, power forward or center really wherever he plays out long term but I think they need more help in the front court because that backcourt is absolutely loaded uh, there's a few other teams that I think could use help at the power forward position um, notably the LA Lakers I think they could use a little bit of depth at the power forward and center position I don't think they're going to end up taking him at two though um, another one that I've had him going to is the Milwaukee Bucks because Greg Monroe has been playing at the five this year and I don't think that they've been able to really have anyone to fill in as a true four spot. Um, Antetokounmpo can play at the power forward spot. He's got the size, but he's more of a small forward. 
um, just in his style of play. And another team that I like him going to is the Toronto Raptors, which is probably my favorite fit. I've had him going to the Raptors in my, I believe, mock draft 2.0. I just don't know if he's going to be able to fall to wherever they land, which has normally been around the 8 to 10 spot in the draft projections this year. I'm going to put a link in the description below to the site that I always use for my draft projection or draft pro projections. I mean, it's just nbadraft.net if you just want to type it in right quick. But they do new mock drafts about every seems like every other day. I'm not trying to promote for them, but I'm um, just showing you guys where I get my draft order from. And again, the Raptors need a drastic amount of help at the three and four spots right now. Um, their backcourt is loaded. Valanciunas is fine. Um, he's he'll be a decent long term option at center. He just um, some people had different ideas of where he would develop, but I think having a guy like Rab, another post presence that if he can develop his game, draw out maybe to being a, be a mid-range scorer, would just help space the floor with that team so much more. I don't know if DeRozan's going to stay around, but if he does, that is a scary thought of having DeMar DeRozan, Kyle Lowry, and even Terrence Ross as outside scoring threats, and then... Um, you know, being able to work it down low to John, or Jonas Valanciunas and then also having the rebounding ability of Valanciunas and Rab on the same team. The Raptors will have lottery picks, so look out for that. Um, but again, I think those are some of my best fits. Uh, the T-Wolves have also been talked about a little bit too. Um, they're looking at a... I mean, they, they do have a decent setup right now at center and power forward with Gorgi Jang, who I believe is extremely underrated. I saw him play in person a few weeks ago against the Thunder and was extremely impressed. And then also, obviously they're pretty much set at the four or the five, wherever Carl Anthony Towns plays. Um, I believe he is, will be a future superstar in the NBA if he's not already. So that pretty much does it. Um, tomorrow I'll be coming back with Jalen Brown. Like I said, I'm going to try to do the prospects that I know most and then work on to the ones that I might not have watched that much. Um, the first three are going to be obviously Rab already done. And then uh, tomorrow I will be doing Jalen Brown, and the day after that I'll be doing Buddy Heald. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have any players that you know aren't maybe top 15, top 30 picks, or more notable guys that I mean that I would consider doing, and you want to see some, I uh, guess more sleepers in the draft. You know DeAndre Bembry or Jaron Blossom game. Some other guys that I've mentioned, Wayne Selden as being sleepers in the draft. Tyler Eulis and some quick risers like that. Michael Benajay. A lot of guys like that. But that's pretty much it. So, yeah.